June 6, 1996, at 2.31 a.m., the Rowlett, Texas Police Department received a frantic call from the Routier home. Darlie Routier had called 911 in a frenzy after she and her two boys had suffered catastrophic injuries at the hands of an alleged intruder, a crime that would claim both boys' lives. Minutes after law enforcement arrived, the responding officers would begin surveying the scene and quickly established a strong and unwavering opinion that the person responsible for this vicious attack was not an intruder, but the boy's own mother, Darlie Lynn Routier. Over the course of the next few weeks, law enforcement began an aggressive investigation that sought to prove their primary theory that Darlie had perpetrated these unspeakable acts against her own children. Within a few short weeks, the case the state had built against Darlie was already considerable, but law enforcement would inadvertently receive one of the most important elements of their case, gift wrapped in a box, covered in dollar store silly string by none other than their primary suspect herself, Darlie Routier. It was a crime of moral ineptitude, caught on camera, that would all but guarantee that a jury would convict Darlie beyond any reasonable doubt. And just seven months later, the weight of that video would help to convict Darlie Routier for the homicide of her son Damon Routier, and her sentence by the jury was the death penalty. In the years following her trial, the general public remained fairly confident over the veracity of her conviction. However, over time, that sentiment has started to change. While many have never doubted her guilt, others believe that she was not afforded a fair and unbiased trial. And now that the Innocence Project has agreed to represent Darlie, many have started to question the case that was brought against her at trial. But for the 53-year-old death row inmate who has exhausted most of her remaining appeals, the inescapable reality is that she is quickly running out of time. In today's video, we will analyze the case brought against Darlie at trial by the prosecution, and then we will carefully review the evidence that has arisen in support of her innocence. We will examine the court records, the evidence, the testimony, and the surrounding facts of her case as we try to piece together the fragmented puzzle of this American tragedy. And when I have placed all of the pieces of the puzzle out for you to see, I will show you the lost puzzle piece that I found buried in an area that no one thought to look. Evidence that was seemingly stored away, misunderstood, and forgotten. And it's what I found in that evidence that caused me to fundamentally change my understanding and view of the case brought against Darlie Routier. So today, I would like to invite you to come with me down this winding rabbit hole and go back in time to a small East Texas town in the conservative center of the Bible Belt as we try to uncover the truth of what happened that terrible June night inside of the Routier home. This is a death row inmate or a mother running out of time. The Darlie Routier case, episode one. Before we begin, there's something very important that I need to cover first. From the very first day that I began my analysis into Darlie's case, I immediately noticed the sheer volume of documentaries and related media that has been created since Darlie's conviction, with the prevailing view of that media and the general public widely in support of Darlie's conviction. Now, while that wasn't surprising or unexpected, what was concerning to me is the discourse that surrounds this case. Please allow me to explain. I realize that many people who have studied this case and are familiar with the facts surrounding it have very strong beliefs concerning her conviction. And it's precisely because of those strong convictions that you don't have to look far to see people throughout the entirety of the internet angrily attacking anyone who tries to analyze this case from a contrary or an objective standpoint. But reviewing this case from an objective standpoint is exactly what I intend to do today, primarily because I believe there are vital legal and societal issues that stem from Darlie's conviction that you cannot afford to ignore. So instead of creating a documentary that largely repeats the same facts that you have already heard, a story that ultimately arrives at the same conclusion, I wanted to take a vastly different approach in today's video to tell you both sides of this case as completely and as thoroughly as I can. Early on in my analysis, I realized something critically important about this case. The matter of Darlie Routier strikes at the heart of our very humanity because it doesn't just involve a crime against the innocent. It is something far worse. It is a horrific and unpardonable offense against children. And it is the nature of this crime that calls upon our human nature to demand justice and instills in each of us the desire to want to take up arms against the perpetrator and dole out that justice ourselves for a crime that we can all agree is truly reprehensible and completely unforgivable. But the criminal justice system was created as a beacon of objectivity, blind and impartial, where the truth and evidence is the ultimate guide in how and when we dole out that justice, where our righteous and understandable anger is 